to my channel. Today I will be showing you how to run a basic Ansible script. I will be explaining every module I used and, and every file and every directory and why they are important. So let's go right into it. The script you see right in front of you is an Ansible script. This is a basic Ansible script. This Ansible script was designed to deploy a Laravel app to an AWS server. Before running this Ansible script, you should already have an AWS instance running or any other cloud platform or any other cloud um, server running. But then you should copy your public IP address and place it in your inventory. That's one important thing you need to do. And then, um, th and then after that, you're good to run this script. So, so before I run this script, I'll be explaining what the script does and I'll be explaining how to run the script. So this script is just like I said before, this script was designed to set up a Laravel, a Laravel app on, on, on an AWS platform. Now I'll be explaining each line on my Ansible script. These are the three directories you need in to run any Ansible script. You will need these three directories to run any Ansible script. So you just create those these directories and place them in another directory and open it on your VS Code. I will strongly advise against writing Ansible script in a nano environment, in, in, a, in, in a terminal environment. Always use a text editor, one that can make your code look as neat as possible to avoid unnecessary errors. Now, your first, the first folder you're going to need is your group variables. It has to be it has to be named group variables. This folder has to be called group vars, just the way it is not group variables, group vars. So when you when you create a folder called group vars, that's where you now you now create another you now create a YAML file. You will need to create a YAML file inside that folder and you name that folder all. That's where you now that is the folder that, that is the file where you define your variables. So these are the variables which I've defined for our which I have defined for the Ansible script that I'll be running. These are the variables. Uh, you can define your variables any way you anyhow you want them to be. You can put any name you want. Just define it as you please or as you desire. Then you close that. The next directory I'll be talking about is your inventory directory. Now this inventory directory is a very simple directory. You just place a single file in it and you call it host. This particular file does not have an extension, so don't put a don't so don't make it a YAML file. This host is just a text file, so don't don't um, don't do the mistake of putting a dot YAML file for this. And that's all. When you create this um, host, you name it web web servers or any other name you want, and then you place your public IP. This public IP is gotten from the AWS instance which you have created or a digital ocean droplet which you have created that's where you get your public ip and you put it right here on this folder if you want to know more about creating aws instances you can check out my playlist on aws to learn how to create terminate or manipulate aws instance feel free to check out my playlist on this channel the next folder I'll be explaining is the template folder. This folder is where this directory, this directory is where I save um, files I would like to duplicate on my server. Any file you would like to duplicate on your server, you place them here. So this is a bash script I would like to duplicate on my server, and this is an uh, the, and this is env, the, and this is another script I would like to duplicate on my server. I will explain where we need all these scripts. This is a web config file that I'm going to need on my server and this is a web file I'm going to need on my server. Now all these files are very important for me to be able to deploy my Laravel app successfully. We we'll also need to create some single files which Ansible will require to run smoothly. You uh, you will need to create you will need to create an Ansible file called ansible.cfg when you create that file this is what you write and put into the file so when you put this this line this line holds holds key checking files this line this line helps to avoid helps to avoid unnecessary questions unnecessary prompts when connecting to multiple hosts 
when you're connecting to multiple hosts before it connects it asks you a yes or no question do you really want to connect to this host so this this particular line of command will, will bypass that yes or no question now this allow word readable files is also important because when running ansible you might run into errors like the you might run into ansible errors that say ansible cannot create this file or ansible cannot find this file and cannot be created so we add this command into this particular file is going to help create any or any temporary file which ansible needs to run so it helps also to bypass errors that's why i have this line of command and i have this line of command it helps you to run smoother and avoid less and uh, avoid um, loss of ansible errors now the next file we are going to need is our main file that contains all the tags that we want to perform on our server so this file it, this file is going to be called main.yaml it can be called anything actually but i named it main.yaml this particular directory and file must be named accordingly just as you see them so this is where we write all our tags to perform then this key this my key pen ignore it or just place your key it's always good to place your aws key in the same directory where you're running your ansible script so you will not have to start specifying the directory where the key is because we are going to need this key to sign into our aws server and and run the ansible script when i run my script this first command is going to first of all authenticate my local system to the aws server to make sure that we are connected it's just like pinging the server to make sure that the boot system the the instance created and the local system i'm using can communicate successfully so this place that says user ubuntu is because my aws instance is an ubuntu instance that's how the username of any instance you create on an aws server is the operating system that it is running so if it's an if it's a debian if i'm running a debian instance on my aws platform i'm going to name my user debian so any any operating system you are running on your aws system that will be your username now for you to run this authentication successfully it's saying that it should pick your public key and send it to aws server so for, if you don't have this key all you need to do if you don't have um, this particular key all you need to do is to run ssh keygen once you run the command ssh keygen on your on your ubuntu subsystem you have that okay let me run it i'm going to run the ssh keygen so that i will have this key when it is required So I'm going to open my Ubuntu subsystem and I'm going to run my SSH keygen. Without this SSH key, I will not be able to sign into the AWS server. And I want the name to be this, so I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change the key name. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to enter, 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 enter until the key has been created. So now I have the key that is called IDRSA public. To learn how to set up the Ubuntu subsystem on your Windows operating system, I have created a video on how to go about the setup and how to configure it to run smoothly on your Windows system. So feel free to check out my channel for the video setup Ubuntu subsystem. So now I'm able now I will be able to run this code smoothly and I'll be able to connect and I'll be able to um, SSH into my AWS instance safely. Okay, now I'll be explaining modules. Modules are these words that are written in blue. What you define like you call a module before you define it so a module is what is is a command that you use to perform an action now this name module is a module that you use to define the task that is being carried out so when you use the name module you can write any description that you want just to explain to the reader or to the viewer what the task what the what the command is performing 
Now the apt module, the apt module is used to carry out apt command like apt install, apt update, apt upgrade, any apt um, command you use the apt module. Block of code is to add PHP repository to my AWS server. You can mind the indentation, the spacing. This one, this app repository starts accordingly in line with name, but the repo does not start in line with app. All this spacing matters. So when you're writing an Ansible script, you have to be careful with the spacing. Now the next module I'm going to explain is the get URL. All these are apt commands, so I'm not going to explain all these because they are just apt command and they are very explanatory. Just the way I've defined it with the name module, I've defined what the command does with the name module. So the get URL module is used to download from a URL, it's used to install or perform, like to go to a URL and download uh, a package just as the module sounds get url so that's what it does so in this place i'm using it to download composer from this particular url and after downloading it i'm putting it in a destination called slash temp slash installer then the next module i'm going to explain is the shell module the shell module is used to carry out shell commands those the commands that you can write on your terminal or your bash terminal those are the commands that you you use when you use the shell module you just put the terminal command that you have that you would normally run on your terminal and then this args means argument so it's used when you want to add something when you want to add a reply or a response to the shell command or to any other command arguments can be used for any other module not just the shell command so you can use the argument command to add a response to the shell command or to any other module. In this particular instance, we are in this particular instance. I am using the create. Um, I'm res I'm responding with create. Create means create means it will create this location. This directory does not exist yet, but after it has run this shell command, it's going to create this directory and place my composer file there. So this was that's what I just did with this block of code. So the next block of code does the same thing. The the modules I use, I'm just going to explain the module so you can understand how to use this module. The module I use, I've explained the name, I've explained the shell command, I've explained the argument, and I've explained create. So I'm going to go to the next module. The next module here is file. The file module is used when you want to interact with a file, when you want to perform an action on a file. So you use the file module to to um, specify to Ansible that you want to interact with a file and then you, you use the path module to explain to Ansible what path, like where is the location of the file. So now this path is the location of my composer which I just downloaded and the mode, this mode is a permission module. So you use it to change permissions of file. So I use the mode and I use the A plus X which means add executable permission to the composer file which I just downloaded. Now the next block of command is a name, apt, name and state. We have explained, have explained name module, apt module, so I won't explain all this again. This is how to um, align multiple shell commands. Maybe you want to carry out different shell commands. Uh, when, when, when one finishes running, the next one carries on. So instead of calling the shell command multiple times, you can just put them, stack them next to each other like this. But you have to take note the shell commands that you are using so that they don't prompt so that they don't prompt you um, they don't give you a prompt because any any command that gives you a prompt while running ansible is going to make you is going to make your ansible script to be stuck so you you, you might notice that sometimes when you run some ant, ansible commands when you're running an ansible script it will stop at a particular task it will not display an error, it will not do anything, it will just stop there for hours. That's because there is a prompt that has been, that, that is waiting for a reply. So, to avoid prompts, you add this da, um, dash Y. This, this dash Y is used to avoid prompts like, do you really want to connect? Do you really want to download? Do you really want to install? So, this dash Y will answer that question with yes. So, when you're running shell commands always remember to add dash y not for all commands but for commands that require a prompt so you add a dash a dash y so it, you when those prompts come up it will bypass them and continue running your ansible script 
now this block of command is just to install all the dependencies for php so it's as i've, I've explained the apt command the apt module this pkg is a package module it's used it can it can be used in connection with apt command so this uh in this block of code i'm saying i want to install all these packages and i want them to be uh, the state i want them to be present mean that they should be active when you see state present it just means that after downloading it they should be active they should be usable they should be executable the update catch yes update catch just means it should update the files which my which i'm downloading with them like a catch is a it's a temporary location of files that can be outdated so this command updates them for me you can install lots of softwares like this or you can install lots of software like this it just depends on how you want to run it both of them do the same thing when you want to install lots of packages together you use the shell command with items and you list all of them or you can use the apt command and you use the pkg and you list all of them so they do the same thing so this this block of code is to install mysql and mysql dependencies that's why you can see mysql server and client so this is a shell command just as I've explained, this is a shell module. This is a shell module, just like I explained. And you can see dash y here to bypass to bypass any prompting, any yes or no prompt. And these are the actions I want. These are the co the commands I want to run in my terminal on my AWS terminal. So it will run this after it runs this and, and does this installation it then runs this and does this installation and then runs this and does this installation pip install is pip install is used when you have python on your when you have python on your on your system on your server if you can look up here we installed python so once you install python and pip you can now use pip to install um, python packages that's why this pip is here you can use it to install python packages not every package python packages so the name module which i've explained action action this action is used for services this action module is used to start services so as you can see here i'm using the action module to start my sql service so i just finished installing my sql and i want to make sure that it is running so i'm using the action command to start up my sql service then this is to create my sql database to deploy a Laravel app or any other app, you're going to need a database where you can store information and data. So this is this this module, this module is used to create MySQL database. That's the MySQL DB. When you use the MySQL DB module, then you name you give the name of what you want your database to be called. So I want my database to be called database one. That's why it is written here database one. And this state present just like i explained before i want the database one to become my default database like it should become the current database which you which i'll be interacting with anytime you put state present it means you want to interact with that particular um that particular file or that particular um creation consistently you're like you're not done it's like okay keep this keep this particular database i'll be interacting with it soon I'll make it my default. Okay, let me just say, let make it my default. So anytime I talk about database, it's going to ref, it's going to refer to this. That's why I'm using state present, state present. So anytime I refer to any of these packages I've installed, it's going to refer to the latest one I just installed. And forget if there's any and ignore any other package or any other database that exists. The second module, which is MySQL user, this is to create MySQL user because now you have a database. Now you want to create a user that can be able to use this database. I use the same name for my database for my user. So my user is going to be called database one, and he's going to have access to database one. I I use the same name all through, so I will not run into errors. So it will be easy for me to put my password, login, and all those requirements that I need for my MySQL. So once I'm running my SQL. I know the only word I need to remember is database one. But I will not suggest you run this. You can put your own name here. You can put Roland DB. You can put uh, my user. You can put Samuel. You can put any name you want here. That's what your, that's what the user of database one is going to be called. And then you give it a password. The password for database one. You put it here. And then this privilege. 
privilege database one means these are the privilege i want to give my database one so privilege of that my database one user that's this user what privilege what is he going to be able to do he's going to be able to do all things like he's going to be able to manipulate data delete data put data um, edit them that's why i gave it all this command is used to give um, super user privilege so that's what i just did i gave all the privileges to my user so he can be able to manipulate anything that involves database one and this command that says host and this command that says host um, percentage is just a command to say um, i'm referring to any host the default host which i'm connected to the service module does the same action that the action module does just this action module which can be used to start up a service that's what the service module also does in ansible there are multiple modules that can perform the same action but with slight difference so this module and this module perform the same action but they will have they might have some slight difference which when you want to use them ex extensively you might notice that they don't work exactly the same anytime you work on a software or on a package or a dependency it's always advisable to restart it if it was not started to start it or to restart it or just to make sure that it is running okay the next command I'm the next module I'll be explaining is the git module the git module is used to interact with git to perform git actions like git clone git remote git all the git um, actions you can use the git module to do that but in this particular place we want to clone a repository so we want to use the git command to clone a git repository into our aws server which is already running what this block of code is going to do is going to clone it's going to clone this repository this Laravel real, real world example app is going to it is going to clone this repository and place it in this directory. So this repository is going to be cloned and placed into this folder, but but it's not going but it is not going to be called Laravel real world example just like the normal cloning action does. It's now going to it is now going to be renamed to server name. Now server name is a variable which has been created and it's in my variable container so if i open server name now you can see server name is git laravel so now so after cloning my folder is going to be called git laravel so if i want to access my folder i'll have to look for git laravel to access the before the to access the repository that i just cloned that's what this that what the action is that what this action is supposed to do and that is and this is how to initiate um this is how to call a variable by using the curly bracket when you use the curly bracket then you put the variable which has already been defined so anytime you use this variable it's going to call up what it has been defined as now the first yes the first yes is going to help you bypass all those um, yes or no questions just as I said and is used to accept uh, do you really want to connect to this host do you really want to clone this repository? Yes, that what this that what this command is going to do. Now the next module I'll be explaining is the template module. The template module is used when you want to interact with your template folder. As you, I explained this template folder previously. Now this template folder is where I store files which I want which I want to replicate or should I say duplicate on my server. Now I want to duplicate a, a file here called bash. I want it to exist on my server, not just on this my local machine. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to use the, um, so I'll be using the template module. I'm be saying source bash. So I'm saying go to my template folder, take my bash script, and then place it in this location. It's going to this 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 dest. I've, I've explained that it means destination. So I put my um, quotation mark. To explain that it's a, de it's a destination that I'm referring to, and then it's going to place this bash script now in this particular file. This file does not exist, bash script.sh does not exist. But after it performs this action, it's going to create this file. These directories exist, but it's it's this particular file does not exist. So I'm taking this, I'm taking this file and I'm and I'm duplicating it on my server and renaming it to bash script.sh. 
so that's exactly what this command is doing it's going to take this file and it's going to rename it as you can see this template don't have any extension all these templates they don't have dot any extension but now when i put it here now i now have a dot sh if you want to run a bash script and you don't you don't specify the dot sh extension the bash script will not run the bash command will not recognize your bash script so i made sure i renamed it and i used the extension dot sh so i wait so i'll be able to run this bash script on my server when you are running ansible script and you want to run a shell command it's always good to it's, it's best to specify the location where you want that shell command to be run default location for a shell script to be run is your home directory and if you run this particular shell if you want if you run this bash script on your home directory it will say bash script not found because this bash script does not exist on your home directory it exists on your server name directory so you have to specify the location where that file exists which is this you can just copy all this destination and place it in front of your sh sh is how to initiate bash script so if you do sh and you place the bash script it's going to run this command is to run bash script and this dash y is to make sure that i don't get a yes or no question or if it get if i get a yes or no question this dash y answers it as yes so i can proceed with my installation my bash script this is my bash script my bash script this bash script is created to install postgres sql on my aws server i already have my I already have my SQL on my AWS server, but I also want another database called Postgres on my AWS server. Note, you can use multiple databases on your on your server. You can have my SQL running, you can have MariaDB running, you can have Postgres DB running. So I want to add an additional database to my AWS server, which is the Postgres database. And this this um and this bash script is going to install that. And this bash script is going to install it for me and create a data a database create a user create a password and restart postgres that's what this bash script is going to do now let's go back to our ansible script you can skip this part if you don't need postgres on your aws server you can skip this part you can delete this bash script from your template because you won't need that next, then the next the next line of command is a permission command so this this block of command is just to change the permission of the repository which we just created permissions are really important when running ansible script because without the right permission specified for the right directory and for the right file your application will not be deployed it will run into errors you'll be you get errors like permission denied you get errors like file not found you get errors that will just specify that your permission is wrong so you have to always make sure you specify the right permission for the right um, directories so you can be so you can be able to access those files and also be careful with your permission so you don't lock yourself out of your own file and not be able to access it anymore now after cloning our git repository anytime you see server name just know we are referring to our git repository called git laravel you can actually ignore using a variable and just use the word git laravel in all these locations called server name the web.php file exists inside the directory which has been cloned when we when you clone a direct when you clone a repository when you clone a repository to deploy an app there will be a folder called routes and inside that folder called routes there will be there will, there will be a file called web.php now inside that file called web.php we would need to uncomment the last two lines of that particular file so to uncomment that file you can use the uncomment command ansible there are many ways to perform different tasks so you can just choose any 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 method that is suitable for you for, so for me i i choose i like to use the template method because i'll just duplicate exactly what i want in my server and i'll not need to uncomment or to recommend or to even tamper with any other file so what i'm doing here i'm removing the default web web.php which is already commented on my server which exists in the routes but it is commented so i want to remove it i want to delete it i want to throw it away i don't need it again and then i'm going to replace it with my own web.php which i have already uncommented 
my web.php is here it's called web file so i saved my web.php as web file in my template so this is the file i'm referring to this is the two lines that are uncommented so if you if, if you want to uncomment this the default file is commented but i don't want to write a code i just duplicated the file and i uncommented myself and place it in my template folder now i'll just duplicate this whole file in my server and when i duplicate it i'll name it as web.php so the act what the action i'm just performing is i'm removing the one which is commented and i'm replacing it with the one which is not commented that's what this line is this shell command is to remove the web.php and this other template command is to replace it with my own web.php file which i already placed in my template location now composer install this composer install this block of command is used to composer composer is a package or should i call it a software which is used to install extensions extensions which a web app needs to do, to to run smoothly so these extensions are placed in a file called composer.log if you <coughs> If you if you access your when you access your repository which you have cloned there will be a file called composer.log if you are able to view those files you can see the into this location to this directory and view the files which you clone to be to make sure that all your files are intact and you have all the requirements to deploy the Laravel app so among the requirements there will be a, there, there is a file called composer.log that composer.log is only when you run this composer command that it unlocks that file and then installs all the extensions that have been specified in that file so composer install is to install extensions which are already predefined which are already saved in that composer file so once you run this command it unlocks that file and install all the extension which you need and now composer install cannot be run as a super user or a root user so that's why I, this command here says become false become for it become true means i want to be a super user so now become false means i don't want to be a super user because if you run composer as a super user it's going to prompt you and say do not run composer as a super user and because of that prompt you're going to be stuck in this command when you're going to be stuck when you're running this command so to avoid that prompt instead of using the dash y we are going to use this become false because the dash y will not work in this particular scenario that the dash y is only for a yes or no question not for changing users then the composer module is used to interact with composer it's a module which is known by ansible so once you use the composer module ansible knows you're interacting with composer then the command is to install you can also run composer update that is this which i have uncommented because you won't really need to run composer update only if you want to do something ex extra that's when you will need to run composer update so for now we are just running composer install that's the only necessary command so if you want to run any other composer command you just replace this install with update or with any other command you want to run and then global command false global command false means that don't don't run composer on any other directory aside this particular directory which i have specified so global command false means don't run it in any other directory run it in this particular directory which has been specified composer has to be run in a particular directory if not it will run in any directory which it chooses which it chooses or it will run in your home directory which you don't want you don't want to install composer extensions in your home directory because that is not where you need it you need them in your server directory in your repo directory now this next block of command is to change permission just like i said i said uh, when deploying an app web application you need specific permission for specific files and specific directories so this block of command is just to change some specific permissions for files and directories now this next block of command is a template command i'll be running this template command to create a .env file a .env file is a file which we need anytime you want to deploy uh, anytime you want to deploy a web app that needs to, to interact with a database now our web app is going to need to interact with mysql database that's why we need .env file if you're not if you don't need a database then you won't need a .env file 
now our my dot env file is in is in template format i created it i created my own dot env file and i saved it in my template so all i'm going to do i'm going to replicate all this on my server so i will now have my own dot env file created on my server your dot env file you put this this app url you're going to need to put your public ip that's your your cloud instance ip in this particular location and then your database name which i already created previously my database user and my database password this particular um, db host this is the default this is the default address for my sql database because i'm using my sql so this is my default host anytime you're using my sql this is the host address to use and this is the default port to use now this block of code this block of code is going to call is going to create a env file for me in my server repository that's in my root repository on my aws server this command is to generate artisan key artisan key is like is a a key which you use to lock your app and open your app and to like to to, to personalize your web app to make it only accessible to you that's what this artisan key is used it's used to generate a particular is very specific key which is available to only you and can be accessed by only you then the next command is a service command this is to start my sql service now to run migration this block of command is to run migration migration just means to um to move a particular set of data from one database to another so all this run migration is going to move all the data that all the data that has been stored in the previous mysql user database and it's going to be moved into my own database one which i've just created that's what run migration does it just moves data from one database to a new database which has been created so this block of code is just to remove the default this state absent remember we always run state present state present but this time around we are specifying a location and we are saying state absent so we are saying make sure that this app is not present remove this app that what the state present uh, absent means don't make this the default um, config file anymore because i told you state present means make it the default so now state absent is saying don't make it the default anymore and now i'm now going to create my own config file from my template now i'm using web config so this is the web config web config contains um so the web config file contains the the configuration that you're going to need to deploy your app to the web that's why here you have your server name this this ip here is going to be the public address of your instance which you are running the public address the public ip address of your instance you place it here yourself and then this v host name has been declared in my variables so you can specify your own location but it has to correlate with something like this it has to be um, in this particular dot var www.html just like i said that anytime you want to anytime you want to deploy an app you have to make sure that it is in this particular directory once it is in this place and you you can name it any other name you want and then you put slash public that should be the document root so this now this block of code is going to create a config file which i've already saved in my web config now it's going to create it and it's going to name it dot config my server name dot config so it's going to be called git laravel dot config so i'm just using my variable because i've already defined it in my variable folder so you can name it anything you want you can put the exact name you want it to be called you can choose to call it laravel config you can choose to call it uh, my app config but it has to be dot config and after creating this particular file in this particular di um, destination you have to be careful the destination where you create it it has to be this exact destination where you create your own dot config file so once you create that file you now have to make it you now have to give it the, the permission that is necessary you have to give it a permission which it can be accessed if not if it doesn't have the right permission it will not it will not be visible and it will not be accessible you will get errors that says file not found or file cannot be accessed now so i gave it the 77 so it will be able to be accessed by anyone and at any time this update a to inside i'm saying 
uh, it should make this particular config file which i just created just created the default configuration file so uh, this update is just to update every other um configuration which i have done and to make sure that it is correlated with my own configuration which i just created then enable apache rewrite module um a2 inside this is just to make sure that the apache default website is brought down and then my own laravel um, website is now put up that's what it does here and then to restart apache after i finish i told you i i, I said previously i said previously that when you interact with a service it's always good to restart it to be sure that it is running so this block of code restarts my apache server my apache service so that i'll be sure that apache is interacting with my laravel app because apache is a is a framework it's a web framework that helps to launch a uh, web application so that is that was the first that's the main reason why we need apache and that's the main reason why we are restarting it so it can interact with my laravel app which i just deployed and make sure it runs smoothly so i restarted the service this the the, the last line that says daemon reload it just to specify in case um there's a there, there is a there is a process a daemon process is a process that that's that very stubborn <laughs> let me say very stubborn it's a, it's a process that runs in the background that runs constantly on the background so i'm saying stop this process by force and restart it so that's what that daemon reload means because apache runs even whether it once you install apache and you start it it runs like a daemon process 